Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about tips for writing starters. When it comes to roleplay, a starter is the first post in a new thread. It's generally decided during the plotting process who is going to write the starter. So I'm going to link my plotting video up in the cards so that you can watch that, because generally what happens is you have the plotting phase, and then once you're done with the initial plotting phase, someone goes and writes the starter. So you'll want to look at that first. For many role players, writing the starter is one of the most difficult parts of role play, because this is a time in role play where you're staring at the proverbial blank page. So how do you begin? What goes into a starter and what makes a starter good? So first let's consider what a starter is really there for. The starter is the first post in a new thread, so its job is to set the scene. My starters tend to be longer than subsequent posts, and the reason why is because I'm taking the time here to describe the setting. So think in your starter about what elements of the surroundings that the characters are in is going to be interesting to them or to their character. For example, what time of day is it? What is the weather like? What can the characters see, hear, and smell in their immediate surroundings? What's the ambient temperature? Is it hot, cold, in between? If they're indoors, what kind of stuff is in that room and how's it set up? Use this setting the scene time as a time to set the mood for the particular thread. For example, are the characters in a smog-filled city, a tranquil forest? Are they in a spooky mansion, for example? Establishing the tone for the role play via the setting is crucial for making sure that your partner is able to keep that tone during the thread. And if there was a miscommunication about that tone during the plotting process, they'll be able to see it in your starter and bring it up before they even reply. Now, if we're setting the scene, of course that means your starter is going to be longer than subsequent posts, and that's okay, but we still want to avoid info dumping. Your starter should not tell you anything and everything about the setting or the character. We can build those things up in subsequent posts. Instead, what the starter should do is establish the need to know things about that scene. If there are things that are need to know about the world, but aren't necessary for that particular thread, I would recommend discussing those things out of character with your partner instead of putting them into the starter for that particular thread. When we're writing starters, it's more critical than ever to remember the AND part of our yes AND. Especially if you're writing with somebody that you haven't written with before, that starter is going to solidify their first impression of your writing. So it's important to make sure that there is a meaty hook in there for their characters to grab onto and for them to be able to write a really great reply to your starter. So how do we do that? Consider starting in the middle of the action sitting in a dark corner, walking down the street, or doing some other solo activity can be tempting to put in for your starter because it's something that you're not really pigeonholing the other character into replying a certain way. They can reply however they want, but it's not very exciting. For example, let's take the sitting in a dark corner of the tavern or bar type starter. What exactly are you expecting to happen next? Now for the role play to happen, your partner's character has to approach yours. So it may seem like a passive starter is nice and it's freeing and, and gives them, you know, everything that they need without forcing them into anything, but it's passive. And like most other passive things, it's not as nice as you think it is. So give your starter meat by starting it in the middle of a fight, or maybe your character going up to the other character and asking them a question, or maybe the stereotypical, the two characters run into each other and the things that they were holding go flying all over the place. But no matter what, make sure that your character is in a place where it's easy for the other character to interact with them. Now, depending on the level of plotting that you did with your partner, you may be able to do this next thing or you may not. But if you did do some plotting beforehand, make sure that your starter either establishes some of the things that you plotted, or it leaves room for them to happen later. You don't want your starter to cut off the plot at the knees because you were in a rush or you were nervous. And that brings me to my next thing, proofread. 
This is often someone's first impression of what it's really like to write with you. So even if you don't normally proofread your replies, I recommend proofreading this one. And I'm gonna link my video up in the card for my clear writing guide because it has in it some proofreading tips for role players. So now that we've established what makes a good starter, let's talk about some of the things that are turnoffs in a starter. Remember, everyone wants to feel special. So if in your starter you introduce your character as the most badass or the smartest or the most beautiful, it can sometimes be a turnoff for your partner. Your partner needs to know that there's room for you to love their character. So when a starter spends a lot of time talking about how amazing the writer's character is, it can sometimes make your partner feel that there's not room for their character to be awesome too. The reality is nobody cares about your character as much as you do. It takes time for others to grow to like your character the way that you like them. So if we bombard a new partner with a whole bunch of stuff about how awesome your character is, it can sometimes make them check out of the process before they've even had a chance to really love your character. On the flip side, I wouldn't recommend making your character the most pitiful either. This communicates to your partner that their character is going to be doing a lot of the emotional labor in the story. And if this is what you guys plotted, cool, but I would recommend building up to it. Don't dump it all in your starter. It tends to go together that people who are playing characters where the other character has to do a lot of the emotional labor, what happens with that Mun is that Mun expects the other person to also carry a lot of the story. Now, of course, these things don't have to go together, but they tend to. And because they tend to, if we have a character like this and we really establish a lot of that in the starter, we could turn the other Mun off because they might think, well, gosh, maybe this is the type of role player who expects me to do all the work for the story. Another thing to avoid is taking forever to get to the part that the other character actually sees. So for example, if you've got a thread where your starter talks about your character waking up in the morning, but the thread is supposed to be about something that happens at a club meeting in the afternoon, just start with the club meeting. And the last thing I want to leave you with is a positive tip. Pay attention to what tropes are popular in the role play world and try to do something a little bit different. It can be impressive sometimes just to see something that you've not seen over and over before. So maybe pick a trope that isn't super common or pick a setting that's a little bit rarer. And if you are going to do something common, make sure that you make it the best it can possibly be. A good example of a common trope can be just as exciting as a more unique example of an uncommon trope. And it's for the same reason. It's because you're seeing these things over and over and over. Seeing a really good example of it can be shocking. So those are my tips for writing good starters. What do you guys like to do in your starters? And what are your tips on writing good starters? Let me know down below. And remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications, all the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.